Hi everyone, over the course of this talk, I'm gonna go through uh, some of what we did um, to move our field course online this past summer at the University of Toronto uh, due to the uh, COVID uh, pandemic making us have to uh, switch everything to online. Um, if you wanna see uh, who's talking to you, this is me in the uh, bottom left hand corner and we've got a, a few photos of, of happier times all within the past year of doing field work uh, prior to the pandemic. Um, and if you're wondering what these people are doing in the bottom here, they're trying to spell out the uh, word diamond in an international field module we did uh, to South Africa in February. Over the course of the talk, I'll go through what we did. Um, we did a series of six different modules, uh, one on a virtual uh, mapping room, one general compass use, uh, a structural mapping exercise, um, a mapping trail north of Perry Sound, which is near Toronto, a core logging exercise, and the Anaconda method of mapping. Um, we met twice a week. Uh, and had a variable level of geological skills due to having to get students that would have been taking geophysics and um, and groundwater courses as part of this uh, geology course. Um, so this is an example of kind of what our virtual mapping room looked like. Um, the detail in the photos uh, increases as you get closer, um, but we kind of we had a campfire. This was sort of where the uh, the instruction TA would wait, and the students would go and investigate the different outcrops, um, do a full notebook. So this was one of the goals of this. There's two real goals of this um, this module. It was to develop their skills and in. in do it, taking geological notes so they were able to take kind of detailed notes on each of the outcrops um, but this was the first one and we were hoping that they would um, start to get some of that camaraderie uh, and, and get individual discussions going um, amongst themselves at the outcrops um, a little bit like you would on that first day in the field where you're in your group but you know quite often on the first day the whole class is together so there's a little bit uh, more interaction um, the next module was um, using the compass and the map. So we uh, used a series of different uh, maps. So these were uh, taken from when I used to be in industry largely is uh, for the ones that used UTMs, but we also used uh, government maps from Prince Edward Island um, to introduce them uh, to um, taking uh, bearings and stuff like that uh, using lat longs and locating themselves on the map using lat longs. Uh, so with this, uh, we also did six different videos showing worked examples as well as demonstrations on how to take the measurements in the field. Um, so in the bottom left here is a, a YouTube video that I posted showing how we sight through the compass um, to lo locate ourselves. Now, in red here are some of the um, blocks we sent them. We sent them six in total, um, but one kind of fit in the middle, so it didn't, didn't fit quite as nicely on, on this uh, slide. Um, but broadly what it was, was uh, showing a plunging anticline, um, and they would take the strike and dips after lining up their blocks with the north arrow. Um, and then they plotted that data as well as about another five or six points I gave them onto a stereo net, um, use the stereo net to find the trend and plunge of the fold, and then use that to project the, um, the, the, uh, to project the data onto a cross section, use the kink method uh, to construct the co uh, cross section for the area. Again, we went through most of the instructions uh, via YouTube videos, uh, as well as worked examples of, of a different map area to walk the students through the process of both taking the strike and dip measurements, um, but also using that those strike and dip measurements to construct the, the cross section. Uh, and this is an example of um, of sort of the what they came up with. So they both made a map. So they were given kind of a site with little outcrop locations. They had to plot 
their strike and dips on them, and then uh, using the stereo net, they got the trend and plunge of the fold, and then they projected it up onto the cross section. Now I did have one little tricky thing on here is I was trying to get them to uh, assess their data and toss out uh, points that didn't fall on the um, stereo net correctly. Um, broadly, they, they didn't really get that. Um, so we have a few little funny kinks uh, in their cross section, but all in all, it was uh, pretty well done. And then module four was the actual mapping part of the online field course. Um, the students in this were uh, expected to take figure out how to do detailed uh, rock descriptions. So this was um, helped by sending them uh, nine rock, rock samples from the different uh, outcrop locations, uh, as well as learn how to plot outcrops on, on maps. Um, they were given air photos to help with this, uh, as well as everything was put into a Google Earth presentation. So for each site, they had a series of photographs, they had the air photo, and they had videos of kind of me going around the outcrop um, with a camera and, and highlighting important geological features. Um, and then they were expected to use that to plot the outcrops, then the outcrops to construct the geological map. Um, this one was not done as well as I had hoped. Um, it was done pretty well, but what I realized was that I should have given them a bit more instruction on how to make a geological map. Um, Normally in the field, we can we can kind of just walk them through it when we go up to them, and you, you just can't do that online. Uh, so what I found was that we rapidly, um, or I think you need to have a, a exercise early on, like perhaps the first exercise that um, kind of introduces them to geological maps, um, because a lot of st students won't have seen them before the course yet. And this is just a look of how it looked like when you went into uh, Google Earth. So this was the presentation they were given. And, and as you click through, you're given this uh, kind of satellite photo and then air photo for the same area. Uh, and then you go through videos of the outcrop and, and a series of, of photos. There is over 100 photos in total, so I won't cycle through all of them. Yeah, there's 100, 167 um, different Things. So that I think 15 of these are videos, uh, some of them are air photos and the rest are, are just regular photos doing both so zoomed in versions of the outcrop as well as zoomed out ones. Um, drill logging was done. Uh, the students were uh, given access to, um, to core shed, the core shed virtual core library through the Minnesota Geological Survey. Uh, we did this so so they could get the mineralogical data, because this has been all done by score, core scan. Um, so instead of putting acid on your rock to figure out the mineral, whether there's carbonate in there, you just cycle to the carbonate uh, window in core scan. Um, and then they were, give it, they were asked to do drill logs. So this is giving them you know, the experience of going through doing a, a drill log as you might uh, in industry where you do the rock descriptions, the alteration, uh, et cetera. And this was pretty well done. Uh, the last module was the Anacotta method for mapping. Um, so this is a detailed geological mapping thing used in, uh, in the ex mineral exploration industry uh, that gets them to plot on geology, alteration, as well as mineralization. Um, one of the things I tried to do here was to, to enhance interaction um, between myself and the students. So, and I told them pretty explicitly about this, but I, I held back some data so they would have to recognize the areas where they needed more information. So this in the field, this would be where the area where you decide, okay, I'm gonna have to look close at this. I'm gonna have to look for these different features. Um, but instead of whereas they can't do that uh, behind their computer, they would ask me and then I would give that detail. But I was trying to uh, create um, more kind of in-depth thinking on their part um, by requiring them to come to me to ask the question and to enhance interaction that way. 
Um, and this is the sort of map that you would um, get. This is from uh, a paper from John Dillis um, and co-authors um, in economic geology. Uh, and this is the sort of map that they produce, which it, generally this was pretty well done where you have uh, phallic alteration, mafic alteration here, and then you have your vein structures uh, as well as the geology and the amount of um, mineralization and alteration within the rock itself. All right, so changes going forward. Um, there's a lot of con uh, fusion. I think it was generally by the lack of familiar familiarity with the students with geological maps in general. Um, so like I said before, normally this would be remedi remedied uh, through real-time discussions in the field um, and correction of the work kind of as you go. Uh, so I think in the future to combat this, we will um, develop a new module that will get the students to do a series of exercises with geological maps, uh, such as geological histories and cross sections. Um, prior to doing the, the more active modules. Uh, to make room for this, we'll probably drop the Anaconda method um, and it will be reserved for, uh, for a thir the third year version of the course that I'm currently um, developing. Now, um, if anybody is uh, interested in using any parts of this co course, most of it is uh, freely available on YouTube. Um, and if you're interested, uh, please don't hesitate to contact me or ask me about this uh, at a later date. And probably the most significant um, problem with the course in this last time we ran it uh, was getting engagement. So um, it, one of the things I think that's most important in field work and one of the best things about field courses is that you really get to know the other students. There is a lot of collaboration between the students. Um, and while we, tr we recognize this was going to be an issue to start with, um, and we did try and, and cover uh, a series, uh, do a series of things like the virtual uh, field room for the first start of the course, um, the student that still didn't really hit all the marks. So uh, in the future, we're going to try and start with a group project because we found that when they did the group project, which was the, the core logging project, that really did enhance the um, discussion amongst the students. and They got to know each other a little bit better. So having a group project, which will be the, the projects with the geological maps, um, first off, we'll kind of get us off on a better foot and hopefully that'll lead to more uh, collaboration between the students. Um, and if anybody has any other suggestions on, on how to conquer this difficulty, please let me know. And again, if you uh, would like to use any aspect of, of this course or get any more uh, details, please uh, contact me um, and I'd be happy to share uh, what we've done.